Today we're going to talk about class-based views. Specifically in this video we're going to talk about two class-based views, the template view and the redirect view. These are actually some of the more fairly basic class-based views and is a good starting point for us to jump into the rest. The cool thing about class-based views is there's multiple ways to use them. If you don't need to do much custom stuff, you just want to do the basics, you can actually just call the view from your URLs file and add a couple of keyword arguments. If you need to do more, you can create a new class and just inherit from the view. Unfortunately, there are no real best practices yet, so I'll just show you some of the ways you can use class-based views and let you decide how you want to use them. I do recommend that you move around the web and look at how other people are using class-based views since they're still fairly new and the function based views you're used to are being deprecated. As we move through the videos beyond just today I'm going to use more and more class based views. However today I'm going to probably do a couple of things you wouldn't normally do in order to accomplish two things. One to see some of what's going on in the background and two I don't want to show you any class based views we haven't discussed yet. Which means as we move through the later videos I'm going to use previous class based views as if you know what they're doing. To start with today we're going again we're going to use template view and redirect view. The cool thing about all views is they inherit from a base view class that contains a template name keyword argument and an as view method. There's a little more there but these are the two key things that you need to know about. The template name is, as you can guess, the basically the string representation of the location of your template. And then the asView method gives you all the functionality that you need for your Django project to execute the view like normal. I already have the part of an application spiked out for us so that all we have to do is concentrate on our views. What we're going to be dealing with is tasks in a to-do list application. First, let's take a look at our template view and use that just inside of our URLs file. First thing we need to do is we need to import our template view from the Django core. The next thing we need is our first URL and we're going to use the template view by itself. And we want to be sure to use the template name keyword argument so that Django knows what template to grab. And there we have it. Now we should just get a page that says that it's a to-do app. So let's go ahead and run that and see how it works. And here we go. I'm a to-do. What about you? That is our stupid little catchphrase for the index of our to-do application. The next thing that we want to do is we want to get a individual task and get that by the ID. So the first thing that we need to do is add our new URL. As you can see, we have named display task view, and so we need to create that. But we're also going to need to actually import it from our views. This is important to note because you're going to have to import your view classes from your views in the future. Now let's create our first view. First we need to do some imports. And 
We've imported our template view, which we're going to inherit from. And we've also grabbed our task from our model so that we can access that to display as an individual task in our template. And as per usual, we're setting our template name. The next thing we need to do is get our data from the database and send it to our template. We would actually normally do this with our context and we will continue to do this through our context though a different way using our class based views. What we need to do is we need to override a get context data, add some information to it and then return the context. Calling the method from the inherited class is, is a very important step in doing anything when overriding your views. In this instance, we're using the quargs that were sent to our object and we're getting the task ID that we sent in from our URL. I just want to note, this is one of those points where you would not normally do this with a template view. But since the template view is very basic, we don't have a lot of helpers and so we kind of have to do this very manually. You would more likely want to use a detail view and we'll get to that in a later video. And there we go, we are using our new display task view and we are getting a task and sending it to our template. So let's go ahead and see it work. And there we go, we have our first to-do task. We need to Reddit all the things. Yes, I have very original ideas when it comes to tasks. Our final example is gonna be the redirect view. How we're gonna use this is with each of our tasks, I don't wanna just reference the URL to have just an ID. I wanna make things a little prettier, and I wanna use the ID and the slug or the title of the task in the URL itself. But I don't want to lose anything that anybody links to already. So I need to do a redirect. But not only do I need to do a redirect, but I also need to make sure that it goes to the right place every time. So let's get started. And the first thing we're going to do is modify our URLs. The first thing that we need to do is go ahead and set up our display task view to work with our new URL structure. So this should give us a URL of task ID hyphen and then the slug. And it'll take us to our display task view which we already have working. The next thing we need to do is we need to set our task ID URL to our redirect URL. And that's going to be simple enough. We're just going to name it display task redirect view. And since we're having since we're adding a new view, we need to go ahead and import that view as well.
So let's go ahead and import our redirect view. And let's set about creating our redirect view. No, we're inheriting from the redirect view. By default, it assumes all redirects are permanent redirects. To change that, you need to set the permanent property to false. And the other main requirement is it needs a URL to redirect to. Most of your views will have a get method, and in this case, we're going to override that to accomplish our specific needs. So now that we have our task object, we need to create our URL. There's a lot of fun ways to do this with Django. To keep things simple, I'm just going to use a string. And in this case, I'm using self.url to set the URL property of this class. Remember I said you need to call the method from the inherited view? Well, that's what we're going to do right now. And there we go. Now when we go to our to-do slash whatever the ID is, it should redirect us to our ID hyphen slug. So let's go ahead and give that a view. So we're already on our 10, so let's just do a refresh. And note, it went up and got our slug. Now let's go to another task item. And we'll just hit this one. And there we go, we're redirected to our slug. And let's just do another one for fun. There we go, and again, I just did another redirect from our slug. There you go, those are the template view and the redirect class-based views. I hope it gives you an idea of how to get started with class-based views. These are the most basic and therefore the most flexible. Now that you've had a chance to see these two class-based views, I recommend you go ahead and start using them in your projects now and start to get familiar with them because they're going to be very, very, very much required in the future. I just want to thank you for watching this GoJango screencast on the template view and the redirect view. I ask that you visit the website and subscribe to the RSS feed and also please visit the Facebook page and like us and get involved over there. I try to keep it fairly up to date with the goings on. I just want to thank you again and have a great day.